Hi, I'm Matt, and this is... <laughs> this is a mess. <laughs> I'll clean up one day. Hi, I'm Matt, and this is Not Enough Tech. In my hand, I have an ESP01. This is ESP8266 board and it's one of the, an array of them that I have lying around, mostly unused and waiting for a project to come by so I could flash them and use it for something useful. Now, in the past I've made several videos about how to use ESP tools to flash ESP-based devices, and you can w actually no, you cannot watch them because they no longer relevant thanks to Tasmotizer. Now, I'm super excited, even though Tasmotizer isn't a brand new news. It's been out for a couple of months, and to be honest, I'm late to the party, but I'm equally excited because it's no longer a hassle to flash these devices, especially if you have one of these, which is an adapter. I'll, I'll show you that in, up close in a second. So, what is ta Tasmotizer and why you should use it? You should use it because it's simple. It requires no Python or ESP tool setup or anything complicated. You just download Tasmotizer on your computer or use the Linux to uh, do it via um, terminal and you'll be able to flash those babies in no time. And how simple it is? Well, let's get started. This video is probably already longer than it would take me to flash ESP device. And I'm going to put a brand new task motor on it and add it to my DIY uh, socket. If you're interested in the DIY socket, there's a video about it here because I've made a socket and it's been, well, useful for about two, three years now. So great. Before we start with flashing it, I need to obviously hook up my ESP. In this case, I'll be using ESP01, which is ESP8266 based. So let me hook it up and we'll jump into a Tasmotizer. Unfortunately, the, this process isn't always as simple as just slotting things together if you have an adapter and development board. Sometimes you have to take extra time and solder cables directly to the PCB, to the dev pads or to the board itself to be able to flash firmware. Whichever way you end up doing it, the pinout between the serial adapter and the ESP board is always the same. As you can see, the window itself is very simple to use. There is almost no explanation needed. First of all, you can make a backup, and I would strongly suggest that you s uh, make a backup of wherever you are flashing, if it's a new device, if you have a cell phone, whatever, because the backup is uh, basically attached to a device and you won't be able to download the backup from the internet and use a backup from another device. So if you already did that, I don't have anything on my ESP, that's fine. Uh, then uh, what you have to do is just select it, that's it, done. Uh, now, when you're flashing a new uh, Tasmota firmware, you have a couple of options. First of all, you have a release candidate, and those are all options in here. So basically, at the bottom, you have a different uh, language versions, and you have the minimal for uh, OTA updates. This is not intended to be used for anything other. There is a light version that has less sensors. Uh, KNX, it's which as it says with KNX support, there's ex extended sensor edition, so you have more sensors hooked up in there. Uh, there is another version that supports displays and uh, infrared blasters. Now, if you're watching this video, probably you don't need development editions, but for some reason, if you want to have uh, access to development uh, editions, then they're, uh, they're also there included. So for this, I'm just going to go with the light version because I want to stick with the smallest size possible and I'm going to uh, make sure I've selected arrays before flashing. Now, the port is already detected, it's con 7 because this is where it's hooked up. If you want to look it up, all you have to do is just go to your device manager and you'll see in the device manager that you have a new device in port. Once you call, um, connect the FT uh, the 1232. So let's tasmotize it.
Okay, and that's a success. And as you can see, it asks us to power cycle the device. Obviously, disconnect the GPIO 00 from ground, otherwise you'll be stuck in a flash mode. Now that I've resetted my device, let's take a look at the config and that you can send. Now there's a couple of options you can have in here in order to send that, and this is very useful because you no longer have to either look for the Wi-Fi broadcasting uh, from the ESP itself, you can just push the config via serial port. So you can obviously specify the Wi-Fi address, so your Wi-Fi credentials, you can have a recovery, which means if the uh, ESP is unable to connect to the uh, primary Wi-Fi, you will attempt to use recovery Wi-Fi. And uh, you can also specify MQTT details, you can provide your host port, topic, etc. Additionally, you have access to modules, which means you can preset your ESP to act in a specific way. So, for example, if I'm flashing a son of basic, I can select son of basic and all pins are going to be configured. Uh, to what would some of basic use and this is very handy because with a single click you can already have your ESP configured so I'm just going to scroll to generic for now now if you generic means the all pins gonna be user assigned now there is another thing that you can do you can have a custom template and if you take a look in here you'll see that a JSON configured string which basically tells the uh, task monetizer how to configure the pins and what it is basically you have a name of the device so this is the name of your template so like in a model you had your generic or son of a rf or whatever so that's going to be your name then you have uh, an array with the gpios and those gpio are just a number of G the gpio so this is the gpio one this is gpio two three four five and then there is nine ten then there is a 12 to a 16. If you go to Tasmata components, you will see the number uh, corresponding with different functions. So for example, if you want your GPIO one, so this is the first pin position in here, to have a function of a switch one, then you would set it to nine. If you want GPIO two in here, it's set to 56. So let's look it up. 56 on my screen is it's LED, and it's inverted state. So that's how it's configured in here. The flag in here is the 8-bit mask flag register. And basically, if you use this lookup table, it'll tell you how you can use that to configure ADC. Now, lastly, you have a base. And base, it's just a setup for the module. So you can predefine what kind of um, device-specific options this ESP uh, can have so if you look at the modules you'll see that uh, there is a list of modules in here and by the assigning the number you'll be able to predefine what kind of uh, esp type you are dealing with so this is the explanations for the template so let me configure my device all i want to do i want to send my credentials for the wi-fi and i want to configure this as a generic device so once I've got those uh, two selected, all I have to do is click save and you don't have to be in a flash mode to push this. Okay, the configuration has been sent and the device will restart. If your device doesn't restart automatically, just uh, reset the device itself and you should be able to connect it from the internet. And as you can see, we have a successful flash so you can configure your Tasmota module. And in this case, all I have to do is just to set one of the uh, GPIOs to what I want, in this case this GPIO3 to be a relay. I told you guys flashing to Smota, now it's simple. It gets even simpler if you have an adapter like this. You can make one yourself for any uh, ESP board. Uh, there is a guide in here how, how I made it for ESP01, but you can basically change the pins and adapt it for the ESPs that you use the most. What's not always as simple is actually looking for the pins needed to flash the Tasmota on ESP devices. So sometimes you're gonna need a soldering iron and this is TS-80 in a box uh, that I found on Thingiverse. And if you're interested in a really nice soldering iron then uh, there is a link in here for that TS-80 for you. I'll be 
playing more with ESP Dance for sure, I'll be actually adding a soldering stand to this uh, case because I think a case with a soldering stand uh, would sound pretty nice. So if you're interested, follow me on social media because I do not have a posting schedule. And if you don't want to miss the content, that's the best to, uh, way to stay in search. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you're all going to enjoy the Sponta and I'm going to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye. It gets simpler if you have a purposely made an adapt. It gets simpler if you have a not. <laughs> Why can't I cannot pronounce this? I told you guys that would be super simple. It gets even simpler if you have a. In my hand, I have ESP6. But... <laughs>